Speaking of people that are just spraying their foolishness around without hitting the target, Uncle Dave has given out his evaluation of the matches at Double or Nothing, and everybody on the Twitter machine and everybody that's been emailing us has been literally so what in the world has happened to him what is go what is this guy's issue and laughing uproariously and i i just heard the main event i don't know any of the others but i just heard the main event and i mean it's so see-through at this point but you may it, it, do you have that in front of you brian that we can go through this briefly and see where Dave's head is at. I have indeed pulled up the latest issue of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, which had Dave's review of the Double or Nothing pay-per-view event. And everybody knows what we thought of most everything. But now we're going to tell you what Dave thought, and there will be no, no evidence whatsoever of hometown favoritism or... (laughs) We've said, I don't think he's being paid off. I don't think he's that smart. I think he's just saying this shit because... They're his friends, but uh, the the California Raisin contingent got raved over. But what what's the whole list starting at the bottom? And I do mean at the bottom. What's the uh, what's the whole list? Well, the bottom is the match you didn't see: the Hardy Party <laughs> and Hook versus Ethan Page, Austin, and Colton Gunn. A star and three quarters. Didn't Jeff Hardy just, like, fall off the ropes trying to do his shit in that match? Well, he tripped and fell when he was trying to do, uh, I think the, I don't know what the move is, maybe it's the twist of fate, or one of these Hardy moves, and then he also fell off the rope right after that when he ran up to the rope, but Matt Hardy's now saying it was intentional, for the record. Yeah, all right. Did it look like it led to anything that would have made it called for to be intentional? No, it looked like it led to a concussion test, is what it looked like it led to. <laughs> All right. But, uh, so, so, when, so a match where people are literally falling down gets almost two stars now. The next match, Orange Cassidy winning a 21-man Blackjack Battle Royal <laughs> to retain the international title. 22 minutes, 28 seconds. Let me make sure I got this right. Four and a... <laughs> uh. Four and a quarter stars. <laughs> So that match was better than pretty much everything Ric Flair ever did with anybody but Ricky Steamboat. It was better than Hogan versus Rock. Better than Hogan versus Rock. Uh, better than... Now somebody, and, and again, we're going to have to rely on some of the listeners to you know, check in with us on this, but I've seen it on Twitter that apparently either Dave Meltzer has never even given Kurt Angle a five-star match. And that now apparently the the Buckaroos and Twinkle Toes have like a dozen or whatever or more. And but Kurt Angle no and no yeah. So now this Battle Royal full of job guys doing stupid shit where they the people in the match didn't even understand what the rules were, nor the announcers who were actually blatantly saying we don't know what the rules are. That's better than fucking Flair and Wyndham. It's better than Austin and Rock. It's better than... Uh, okay, all right. Those matches may have been better if any of those wrestlers had pockets. <laughs> But, Jim, we've talked in the past about the inflation rate for the Observer star ratings. How do you weigh star ratings today versus star ratings of yesterday? This next one may kind of give an answer to where to start the uh, where to start the scale from with inflation. Adam Cole defeating Chris Jericho in an unsanctioned match in 19 minutes. Okay, now, we not only us, but most people with vision and verbal ability said boy that sucked it sucked and at times because it was so quiet it was cringy yeah three and a quarter stars (laughs) all right that used to be one step below a classic see that's the former dud dud is now three and a quarter stars yeah we mentioned that dud was on weasel scale why is dud not a part of dave's vocabulary anymore he used to use it 
I don't know, but the next I'm one. just saying again, three and a half stars on the old scale. Even the old Meltzer scale was one step below a classic. Let me tell you something. He wasn't friends with Chris Jericho. That match would be negative five stars. That was one of the worst matches ever. Everyone has said it. That was one of the worst matches ever. Chris Jericho's had bad matches. That was the worst Jericho match ever. But anyway, FTR versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal with Mark Briscoe as the referee. Four-star match. <sighs> Again, even though I'm a fan of everybody involved in the thing, as a wrestling match with some twists and turns, even with the busy finish, at least they look professional. They all can grab a fucking hold without falling down. And But that wasn't a four-star match because a four-star match would have been Jesus Christ, again, the Midnight Express and the Fantastics, <laughs> or the goddamn... Did Horse the Southern Boys the... match get five stars or got four? No. And... Yeah. I think it was four. And again, the Andersons and the Rock and Roll Express, whatever, or whatever era you want to go to of tag team wrestling, that wasn't a four-star match. That was the best wrestling match on the show because it was probably the only wrestling match on the show. But it wasn't... <sighs> All right. In a ladder match, Wardlow retained defeating Christian Cage for the TNT title. Three and three-quarter stars. <laughs> okay, Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon, I'm pretty sure, got four stars at WrestleMania. No, no, this... they got five stars. They got five stars. Wait a minute. Had he broken that scale yet? Oh, he broke that years before that. Did he did? Okay, yeah. they, so they got five. Okay, well, this one was one and a quarter star, yeah, less. Okay. Tony Storm defeated Jamie Hayter to win the AEW Women's title. A star and a quarter. Well, it was four minutes and the girl was hurt, so there was nothing. Then it wasn't supposed to be a great match. It was three minutes and one second. The House of Black defeated the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. Three and a quarter stars. <clears throat> Again, just a match on the card to fill some time. And, you know, that, that used to be the two-star slot, so he's doubling at least. And that's, you know, depends on whether there's no personal friends involved or not. Jade Cargill defeated Taya Valkyrie. I'm not gonna, there's no star rating for the Statlander part, but the match with Taya Valkyrie, two and three-quarter stars. What? Jesus Christ! <laughs> Didn't we say that stunk? We did. Okay, if you went back to 1998, I guarantee you that he just gave that match a better rating than he was giving the pay-per-view matches from either company at the time involving the fucking champions. MJF defeated Sammy, Darby, and Jack. Four and three-quarter stars. Oh, good Lord. He can't, he can't legitimately, doesn't this kill the credibility of anything he's trying to do when, okay, that was a, a fine example of modern four-way gibberish, right? And MJF's great. And nobody broke anybody's leg accidentally. But you're telling me that that's almost at the level, again, of a, Flare and Steamboat, or of a goddamn... What's your greatest match of all time, Brian? I don't know. There are ones I really like, and I always talk about one specific one. I think I got three and three-quarter stars or something. Piper versus Bret Hart at WrestleMania 8. I love that match. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, from any company, in any era, suddenly that thing with Jungle Boy involved was better than everything all those people have ever done. Okay. Well, he has great hair. But finally, Jim, Anarchy... Well, and here we go. Here we go. Anarchy in the arena. John Moxley, Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli, and Wheeler Yuta defeating Adam Page, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks. 26 minutes, 59 seconds. <laughs> Five-star match. How does he justify it? 
Well, they have a great fucking, hair. A fucking mess where nobody even exhibited any wrestling talent because there was no wrestling to the thing. Exploding fucking sneakers. Goddamn people falling all over each other like drunks on a Saturday night all around the arena. Phony looking shit everywhere in a match. You can't have a five star match with phony looking shit in it. Sorry. Case closed. Call me irresponsible. Now, for the record, let me just say, not that this changes how you see it or anything, but I think Dave was actually there as opposed to someone watching it on TV. Even worse. You could have a better chance of following it on television. How's somebody in the arena going to see the shit that's going on in the fucking breezeway in the parking lot at the same time as the fucking cheap seats and the goddamn ringside? And again, phony looking shit, guys that aren't over, an issue that isn't over. Complete chaos for fucking 30 minutes. You can send anybody out there and just say, go, go fucking have a garbage match for 30 minutes. It's all going to look the same. And that is what it be. He knows that's not five stars. That's not the greatest match of all time. That's not perfection. What that is, is his fucking friends are in it and he doesn't want to hurt their feelings because they would never forget and they would pout and they might not talk to him anymore. Not to give him scoops, just to talk to him. Tell him how much they like him. If he was actually honest and told the truth that it's fucking stupid and silly and they shit the bed. And the fucking people that have talent that were in the match were buried. And the people that don't have any talent that were in the match, the buckaroos and useless and the plumber, they were embarrassing. Yeah. But he won't say that. So it's five stars. That happened before. Remember that pay-per-view? I always talk about that MJF Darby Allen match that started out that pay-per-view. That got like four and maybe four and a half stars, maybe four and three quarters. And then it was the Bucks in a brawl in the arena, and that got five stars. Yeah. And it was a match that like no one thought was spectacular. Like even Bucks fans are like, eh, you know, nothing great. Five stars. And and sometimes he'll say, Well, I it's not my kind of match, but it was a perfect example of the genre. You know, then in that case, then does he walk around? in truck stop bathrooms investigating other people's turds that they haven't flushed? Because, well, it's not mine, but what? it's a perfect example of the genre. What genre is that? Exactly. <laughs> Just because something is a perfect example of the genre doesn't necessarily mean that you want to smell it, taste it, look at it, or pay to see it. On the Cornet Dooley four-star scale, what do you give Adam Cole versus Jericho? Oh, God, that, because of the length of it and the preposterosity of it, that would have been around a a one star unless Weasel was cranky and then it would have been a dud. But Weasel wasn't a, a big dudder. That was only for really bad shit, like Sonny King versus Tojo Yamamoto with a complete <laughs> style clash, right? In, and, and, and in the early 80s when Tojo was old and Sonny had already had a heart surgery. This is a match from like 84 of Tojo versus Stan Frazier. It's the most ridiculous looking thing Oh my thing God. Ever. It just yeah. looks ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, what would you See, give? See, th those got the duds in those days. What would you give Anarchy in the Arena? You know, again, <laughs> we gave the first six star rating that Weasel gave and I concurred with was for a brawl in the arena. Remember the Louisville Gardens brawl with Lawler and oh, yeah. Dutch and Dundee and Dream Machine and the uh, Nightmares and Ferris and Sullivan and Jimmy Hart because it was an eight-man tag or a, a tag match that erupted into a multiple run-in that erupted into an arena brawl that was over with and you thought it was going on forever and when you go back and watch the video it was over in like four or five minutes tops but it was a goddamn thing they kept it up and oh my god it kept building and building and building this started out at 100 miles an hour, wouldn't fucking go away. If we were rating these matches like we rated the wrestling matches we saw years ago, all this shit would have got a dud or a one. Because it was about not only how good the shit looked or how fake it looked. The reason why Tojo and Plowboy was a fucking dud is because it all looked like bullshit. 
If it looked phony, it got penalized. If it looked like they meant it, it got fucking rewarded. If people were sitting there going, this looks pretty fucking phony, it got penalized. And if they were throwing babies in the air and trying to climb in the ring, it got rewarded. And two stars was right in the middle, about what we thought it was going to be. So I'm trying to think of a, a highly rated match from a big show we've seen recently would have been Becky Lynch and Trish. That would have got really? and, and, and Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar. And they didn't go for fucking ever. That's another thing. You didn't have these goddamn matches in those days when we were rating them. That fucking, okay, the baby face, you get a heat on a baby face. And then he gets his, a tag to his partner. And then the partner makes the comeback, and then they go into the fucking finish. No, now they tag the partner. The partner comes in and does shit. Then more people disappear. Then they tag people back in. Then there's a simultaneous tag. You've forgotten about the heat to begin with by the time they get to the finish. It goes on for fucking ever. So that would have been a, been a deduction also for the goddamn get to the fucking point, get the fuck out of here, instead of constantly restarting the match again in the middle of it. You know, I love WrestleMania 3, and I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, especially if you were a big NWA fan at the time or working there, but I love that event. And just about every match was like seven minutes or less. And I'm not saying that's the way to do it either. But even Bash 89, not every match was, not every match felt endless. Every match no. ended and you were ready for more. And this yeah. one, every match was almost 20 minutes, except for the women's matches. They were kept to three minutes and eight minutes. But every other match felt like it was close to 20 minutes. Well, because it was. Remember, you just read the time. Some of them were 30 minutes. And that's the thing is that they've romanticized. Whenever, you know, Flair talks about how I went 30 minutes every night. He did because he was in a fucking main event and he was the world champion. The first match was six minutes. Somebody got their ass kicked and got out of there. And they've romanticized that every match has to be long to be classic or to be to show their their artistry or whatever. And the, the, the stories in the territory days when there were three or four matches on a card and the card had to last two hours, so you learned to put the time in and you learned to call shit in the ring that was appealing to the people that you were working for because it was a house show that wasn't television. In either when they started having main event matches on TV, or pay-per-view became a thing, or a closed circuit before that, they still didn't have every match go 30 fucking minutes. It was just the big ones. That factoid has been lost. And now, long equates classic, and they're shooting themselves in the foot. Anyway, that's my opinion. And that's the thing, you know, when you had to... You could put time in, but at a house show, people's attention span was longer back in those days, whereas now on television, you know, if, if, I've been on shows that literally had seven guys on it, including the referee. Uh, you know, fucking a single match, another single match, <laughs> those guys back in a fucking tag, and a single main event or whatever, or even three matches. A single match and a tag match and a fucking six-man tag. They would do it. That's when you had to put in 30 minutes at every fucking match. And, and in the old days, in a lot of the territories, the cards were short and all the matches were two out of three falls. So you had three matches, but you had nine falls. But there was, there was a reason for that. There's not a reason for this. They got 150 fucking wrestlers. Make your point. Get the fuck out of there. 